back with the feminist family. We back with the feminist family. Oh my God, I look fat. We feel alive. <laughs> we gain <laughs> we weight. Gain weight. <laughs> it's been a long time. Like, uh, how long? Um, since 2020. Yeah, I think for sure you could say two and a half years since we since we recorded last. Mm-hmm. So where were we? What did we start? I don't know. I think uh, we just didn't do it. And then life got in the way. Mm-hmm. So then we just kind of, yeah. But was, we're back. But I guess we're back. And I'm happy to be back. <laughs> <laughs> did you miss it? I, I kept myself busy. Mm-hmm. I, I had, for a while, I had three shows that I was doing, except with the, without doing the feminist family. Mm-hmm. And then, so I was, I was always very busy. And even now I'm still, because I put so much work into the show that I do, mm-hmm. I, uh, it's, yeah, it's there. But did you miss the feminist family? Cause it's different, right? It's not like the rest that you're doing. Plus it's something we're doing together. Yeah. I love talking to you about things. Yeah, I think that we kept the feminist family, but out of the <laughs> We <public>. weren't recording. <laughs> we were not just <laughs> recording, but yeah. that's who we are. Yeah. Okay, I guess we're going to introduce ourselves. Uh, I suppose, yeah. So uh, it's the feminist family. Uh, okay. If if, uh, if you don't remember us or don't know us, I'm Corey and this is... Pamela, Pam. And uh, yeah. So, but depending on um, where you know me on my social media, I may be Ikigata Nyakadzi. Ah, yeah. Shirasoni. <laughs> oh, Pam, Pamela. So, this is me. Cool. And we are the. Yeah, we're the feminist family. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Why the feminist family, though? What. What do you, people going to be maybe having this question, like um, why these people call themselves the feminist family? Well, I, I think part of it is branding, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> like we're just, we're doing, we are a feminist family. We're not the only feminist family, mm-hmm. obviously. No. But uh, we, we are. We are a feminist family. We are a feminist family. Mm-hmm. We try to practice uh, feminist values or anti-patriarchal values, egalitarian values in our life. Mm-hmm. And uh, we try to not have a hierarchy of anyone in command of the household. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Many people, when they um, see me uh, on Twitter, for example, because that's where I'm going to be talking about more uh, feminism or... Um, they think that uh, I'm uh, single because uh, they know that I'm not anymore with the father of uh, yeah. uh, my two daughters. They think that I'm single, that I hate men, mm-hmm. um, that uh, I really hate men. Some people are like, uh, they think that I've been um, deceived a lot uh, because I met uh, bad guys. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's what made me a feminist. But what made you a feminist? In Education. That, like, <laughs> how come a man is a feminist? Like, because um, you were um, considering yourself as feminist before we met. Yeah, right? for sure. Uh, you didn't become feminist Although, because we met. I know because, like, okay, so there's a little bit of a, a gray area there, right? Like, mm-hmm. I don't, I don't refer to myself as a feminist. Because I know that for some feminists, mm-hmm. in order to be a feminist, you have to be a woman. Okay. And that's fine. I don't need to be called a feminist. I am a person who supports feminism. Mm-hmm. So you don't... Um, I don't... You somehow consider yourself as a feminist, but you are not going to call yourself a feminist. I, I don't want to take a term that people think is uh, used for... A margin, uh, an oppressed group, and I don't want to apply that to myself mm-hmm. because I'm, in case you haven't noticed, a cis, het, white dude. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm all the privileges on one. <laughs> but what is feminism uh, for you? And um, at what moment um, have you discovered feminism? Uh, well, actually. I was not a feminist in 2000 and say 13. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, but, well, maybe 2012. But when my then wife separated, like we separated in the end of 2011, and I went on, I guess, a journey of self-discovery and, and attempting to learn what went wrong because I, I needed to own my accountability in that relationship and mm-hmm. the things that went wrong with it. And uh, so I wasn't a feminist. And I still found myself drawn to um, feminists, quote unquote feminists, who were like pro-man feminists. Mm -hmm. Like uh, there was a woman who called herself the skeptical feminist for a while. And uh, uh, I quite thought, I thought she was great because she was like, we need to talk about what's happening with men and boys and how society treats them and whatnot. But then I was also reading other feminists and listening to like Anita Sarkeesian, which is apparently very offensive to a lot of people who play video games. I don't know who that is. <laughs> yeah, she did, she did a YouTube series in mm-hmm. the the early two thousands or in the two thousand tens kind of the area about like video games and and tropes that affected women and like the intersection of feminism and video games. Mm-hmm. And so there was a lot of backlash against that but i found some a lot of what she said to be quite insightful and so that made me read feminists and so i kind of drew further and further away from the uh the pro-man feminists Mm -hmm. who actually it turns out are actually more anti-feminist but using the term in such a way that they can be you know call themselves feminists without advancing the progress and needs of, of feminism <laughs> so i mean it's been it's been a journey right like mm-hmm. it's been a long history of learning and reading and and watching videos and listening to podcasts and like and therapy <laughs> therapy yeah why therapy because there's a lot of things that a, a person goes through life and and thinks of when and, and uh it's not all good you, so you gotta therapy, analyze your life. So therapy is something that is helping you become or understand more feminism or uh, understand yourself in a um, It helps uh, me understand. Yeah, it and, helps me analyze my behaviors and how I may perpetuate certain non, you know, mm-hmm. certain patriarchal things within like my own behaviors. Interesting. Yeah. Well, You've been a feminist your whole life, basically, <laughs> without always knowing what it was. Yeah, without really knowing it. I think that it's um, it's something that I grow up with without even knowing what is feminist. Because you can sometimes feel that you are different in a world, but sometimes you need to, you know, to cross that word and that explanation and to say, oh, okay, so... I'm not abnormal. Like it's, mm. there is something wrong, obviously, because uh, as far as I remember, like uh, I uh, grew up seeing the difference between um, the treatment um, towards like girls and boys, um, the separation, and also the um, I, as far as I remember, like uh, I always thought that something wasn't fair. Mm. Mm-hmm. It wasn't fair at all. Like uh, certain things are just obviously me not as a girl, and in the, <laughs> in, in the society where I, I was born and where I was growing up, I was like, okay, there is something that is not fair, and it's just based on the fact that I'm a girl. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So no matter what I can do, I cannot correct that because that's how the society is. As long as I will be a girl. You'll always be in this category. It, it, yes, and this uh, and uh, I wasn't finding that fair at all. And um, but I haven't uh, met feminism like uh, when I was in secondary school or, uh, or mm. something. It's, it wasn't a thing. I discovered uh, feminism way later after my secondary school and um, in books and on TV. Mm. Um, on TV because. Um, I started to meet more and more uh, uh, French TV. Okay. Because you know? uh, before I was in Burundi, I was just listening to the TV or the radio, but Burundian programs oh, that could have been in 
French, okay. but really Burundian right. central. Yeah. Uh, but then um, with my first husband, I um, started to be interested in the you know politics uh, in France right. uh, or in Belgium because he was Belgian. And through, I think, there's some shows like in France, like uh, that's where I started to hear like about feminism. And I was like, oh, imagine like I, I was like that. You know, a boy who um, grew up somewhere and uh, feeling that they are gay, but they never met anyone who's gay. Mm. Mm -hmm. They never. <laughs> they have like yeah, like same sex attraction or whatever. Yes, but you, but you, n you never heard anyone like uh, who is like that, or you, it's not a thing. Right. right? But uh, that's how I discovered feminism, and uh, and since it's something that uh, uh, that's. That's there all the time. I think that we talking about feminism many times, like oh yeah, and it comes like uh, from different things. Like it's not only um, because they're talking about that in the news or uh, you no, know. yeah, no, that's right. Like uh, it's something that affects our day to day life, right? Like yeah. we talk about money situations, or mm -hmm. we talk about like uh, the way that we raise the girls, or the way that. You know, I raised my older kids. Mm -hmm. Like, there, it plays a role in our every single day of our lives. Yeah, <laughs> but it's not uh, oriented to hating men. Like, uh, I um, I, I I see this more and more. I don't know uh, why, but people talking in bad about feminism, about like uh, thinking that it's about hating men. I even have people who hate me because I say that I'm a feminist because they they think <clears throat> that I'm here to belittle men. Like, uh, how is it? How <clears throat> what's the difference for you um, now that you uh, know about feminism, that you are aware of things, that you're going through uh, therapy to uh, unlearn some stuff? Like, what changed in the way uh, in your way of being with? Um, with a woman, with me. Well, I think... Did you become like a lesser man? Are you less a man? <laughs> I don't feel like less of a man. Am I oppressing you? <laughs> like... Well, I think first we have to acknowledge that like the attitude of people hating feminists and calling them man haters, that's been around since the very start of feminism. Mm -hmm. When they were just looking for the vote in <laughs> the United States or whatever, like ever since women have tried to get equal rights, mm -hmm. people have said, this is all about hating men. Mm -hmm. So, but no, I don't feel like less of a man. Like, I feel like, uh, I feel like a better partner, actually. Like, that's like, I am more thoughtful about the ways that I behave. How is it um, different? Like, uh, um are there some stuff that you may be doing at home because um, you are aware of uh, because of what you learn about feminism that you wouldn't be doing, for example, like uh, in our daily life? Like, how is it for you <laughs> now? Because it's been four years yeah. that we're together, right? Yeah. And as for myself, like, this is the first time I'm in a relationship, like, with... Um, uh, a person who is disaware of feminism, mm. right? Mm. Um, who is unlearning stuff? Like, um, of course, like I can, I can see the difference, right? Mm -hmm. um, in the way of thinking, like. Uh, but I would like to know for you what changed. Like, what what is that thing that you were doing before? And that you won't do now. Well, I mean, at the, at the risk of outing myself for past toxic behavior, I was not a particularly good husband to my first wife. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was, I believed in the, I believed in if you're going to get married, then she needs to take his name. Mm -hmm. And if uh, you're going to do certain things, then the wife should take the home and the man should take care of the work and, and, and the bills and whatnot. And like, I believed in that stuff, mm -hmm. but as I've grown, like, obviously I know like you and I, we're pretty much the same when it comes to like the way we pay bills and handle money. Mm -hmm. 
But uh, like if like, but that's not a gendered thing, obviously, right? Like, because we both handle money mm. equally, wi- equal way. <laughs> so, mm. so it's it's not like it's not like I'm better with money because I'm a man, mm-hmm. and it's not like you know, like there's any gender division here where one of us is better than the other on at anything based on what the fact that we're a man or a woman. Mm-hmm. Like, I can be like quite. Uh, quite soft and caring with the kids, mm-hmm. and I I think that that's I think that's normal, right? Like I don't think that that's I don't think that that's a gendered thing. I don't think mm-hmm. that that's a feminine quality. I think that's just how humans should be. But I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if that answers what you're actually looking for. But I don't know. Uh, it's really hard to say. Um... Because I don't want to make like comparison saying that it's just this is like this because you are a feminist. Right. Um, compared to my ex-partners, like for example, and say they were doing this because they weren't. Because uh, I believe that there is also the character of a person, right? Yeah, that's right. Uh, I don't think that you were that bad as a <laughs> person before and that you, you changed well, that just mean- because you became... Yeah, I mean, uh, it's been, like I say, uh, my separation was in 2011. That's 12 years of growth mm-hmm. and self-discovery and education in a variety of ways. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, yeah. I would say that um, I feel more uh, understood as a woman. Yeah. Uh, in our relationship, I found that um, you are, uh, your the level of awareness of what uh, can be, possibly happening in my mind as a woman hmm. um, I find that uh, it's something that you're gonna be understanding more I'm not gonna find like uh, issues like to talk about either inequalities or uh, if I you know the way I'm saying like uh, if it's something that is happening somewhere and we are talking about it like I find that it goes pretty smoothly because yeah. you are aware of so uh, many equalities, like uh, inequalities, I mean, or um, oppression towards, uh, you know, women. You are aware of all of that. So it makes it easy. It's not like I feel like I'm going to be, I'm going to have to explain to you. Mm. You're going to get it pretty quickly, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think that uh, depends on the subject, right? Like, I don't want to, there's been times when you've had to point out like that I was kind of in a patriarchal mindset, even though, you know, when I wasn't intentionally being that way. Mm-hmm. Because it's a process, right? Yeah. We we talk about that. We I mean, we exchange, but it's easier because there are some steps that yeah. you already have done by yourself, right? Yeah, that's right. I'm not... I don't feel like I'm educating you. Yeah. I feel like I, I can uh, contribute to what you already know, but I don't feel like I need to educate you and explain and put in context, like when we're talking about like uh, what's happening in the world. And, right. You know, in order to get finally, I would say that compassion even. Because mm. mm-hmm. um, that's something that can be, pretty hard like to because we are I'm not gonna say that I'm following everything that is happening in the world but there are so many things happening that are like like crazy the world is just crazy and when (coughs) we're talking about that it's easier for me um to not have to explain right right? yeah Yeah, how it's affecting me or uh you know because you did so much work before we met. And yeah, you keep doing it, right? Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Like, And I, I, th- I think that even if you haven't done the work learning about feminism, like if a person leads their life uh, with empathy mm-hmm. and trying to understand where people are coming from, even just as a general rule, Mm-hmm. Like that's probably going to have a better effect. Like you're going to feel more understood and you're going to feel more compassionate. Like because I'm already, I'm intentionally listening, right? Like I'm intentionally mm-hmm. trying to be there and 
gra- understand where you're coming from. Yes, uh, yeah, for sure. There is a uh, empathy, and that's something that you um, you have a lot. <laughs> I'm all the time saying that. Um, but there is also knowledge. I feel like uh, when we are talking, like many times, you're gonna be bringing some points that are even gonna grow our discussion. Like uh, even my understanding of uh, of the word. How many times have you say no? It's because he's gaslighting. Mm-hmm. Or uh, it's um, what are the example like? Uh, uh, this is like a um, about the angry. You know, you talked about recently like a, the angry black women. Oh yeah, the trope of yeah. Um, you're gonna be identifying that pretty quickly, <laughs> and I find that it's it's really pretty good to uh, be with someone who's. Uh, that aware because there is empathy, but there is also knowledge. Because mm. um, living in a patriarchal world, like uh, y- you need to be open to be unlearning, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so having someone who has done that unlearning to a level it makes life easier. Yeah, I can see that. Um, another difference, I would say. Um, I don't know if it comes from empathy or it's, if it comes like a, from the work that you've already done. Like a, it's understanding like how uh, things can be harder just because I'm a woman in, in the way it's affecting me. Mm. Uh, what's happening in the world, you know, because uh, um, either when we're talking about my trauma or stuff like I feel like you're going to be understanding quickly, um, you know, when I'm reacting to stuff like that are happening, not in our life. Right. Because you, you're you going to be associating that somehow with my trauma and understand quickly that it can have a link. Yeah. Sort of. Right? Yeah, I could see. Yeah, I mean, that's, I guess, kind of the thing with, like, when you start when you educate yourself, like mm-hmm. you, you can draw connections that you wouldn't be able to draw in other ways. Like, so like if we're talking about, uh, some, I don't even know what, a, I can't even think of a good example off the top of my head, but if we're talking about something that is traumatizing, uh, related to your own past, like, uh, abuse victims or, mm-hmm. or, uh, um, uh, women who have had to deal with, uh, harassment or, or what have you. Like these are things that are are fairly common, and I guess just by virtue of not being a person who's in denial about that, <laughs> it probably makes it easier. It's, it, it, it makes a difference. Like <laughs> yeah, because a lot of a lot of dudes, and I mean, we're I'm, I'm not a lot of dudes are not they're in denial about these things, right? Like yeah, 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 that's for sure. And I think, I mean not to go on some random tangent, I think that that's a product of patriarchy that harms men too because men tend to believe in like uh, their own kind of self-righteousness and their own kind of like, I'm the head of the family and I'm in charge and that means I'm tough and like... Are you the head of our family? I am not the head of our family. You're not the head. Uh, there is no head of the I'm family. I'm not the heart of the family? There is two people... We have hearts and heads. You are the head, but it's you, it's you who decide. You are the head. You don't decide. No, that's that's what makes it a partnership, right? Okay. Right. So you are not the chief. No, there's no chief. You are the man. I, I mean, you you know me. So you are under I, my orders. I do not believe that there should be a chief anywhere, in any aspect of society. There is nobody who has the right to rule over another person. Mm-hmm. And let alone in my household, your household, we do not have the right to rule over each other. You're not my <laughs> boss. I am not your boss. You're not the boss of the kids. I am not the boss. I do not own them. You don't own them. <laughs> they, you don't own children. This is easy. You don't own children. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. <laughs> but some some of my trolls on Twitter are like, uh, going to be like... Uh, Oh, it's a guy that uh, you have in your pocket. I don't have you in... Do I have what you is, in my pocket? What does Are that you in mean? my pocket? 
What does that mean? It, it means that if does I it... decide I'm going to eat my sweet, if I decide um, something, that's how it's going to happen because it's me who decide. There is no one, like, that's the thing is like, there is no one person that decides in our family, right? Like we discuss things mm -hmm. and if we come to a conclusion together, sometimes it's going to be the way you wanted it to be in the first place. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's going to be the way that I wanted it to be in the first place. But what makes us decide? Discussion. Argument, perhaps. Not your penis. <laughs> it is not a product of genitalia. <laughs> it's not gendered. It's not gendered. That's right. Yeah. No, it's it's foolishness to think that because one has, like, this is the thing. Like, men, men know mm -hmm. that they are not more capable of ruling a home than a woman. Mm -hmm. They know this. Like, if they actually give it half a fucking second thought, uh, <laughs> they know this. Mm. <laughs> but practically, who owned the kitchen in our house? Nobody... Nobody owns the kitchen. I mean, our landlord owns the kitchen. <laughs> you mean that there must be someone between us who is the boss of the kitchen? What is it? I don't, I don't think that's a thing. No, no. I, I reject it. <laughs> we do what we can. Uh, I think, I don't know. What, what does that mean? It means that when I am able to cook, I cook. When you mm -hmm. are able to cook, you cook. And when neither of us can cook, we order out. Mm -hmm. If we, <laughs> if when I do the, can do the dishes, I do the dishes. When you can do the dishes, you do the dishes. And sometimes the kids do the dishes. <laughs> so it's not 50%? It is whatever it happens to be. There's no rule about 50% or not 50%. It's what you and I are capable of doing as partners. Because I, the job of partners, right, is to make up for the lost ground that the other one might have. Mm. So if you are not feeling up to doing the dishes, then that's my job. <laughs> <laughs> But are you going to do it with, without me asking? Like, of course. Uh, do I have to ask you to do the dishes? Do you have to ask me to cook? No. No. Just, and uh, like, if I feel like cooking, I'll mention to you, I want to make this thing. Mm -hmm. If you feel like cooking... I'll tell, you'll say, I'm going to make this thing. And if neither of us does, then we'll be like, well, what do you want to eat? Okay. <laughs> so if I'm not cooking, that's not my fault. <laughs> Why? If I didn't cook, it's not like a, you're going to be like, a, you haven't done your portion of the work. <laughs> no. Because that's not actually how a real partnership works, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Who owns the cleaning part who owns the cleaning part who has as a responsibility the cleaning of the house well we both do i i find i find that in some ways you do more of it i find that you do more of it <laughs> <laughs> i tend to do the laundry you do the laundry you do the whole laundry <laughs> you do the whole laundry but But I, I like doing the laundry, so... I don't like to do the laundry. I don't like folding. I like doing the laundry, like... I don't like folding either. I like figuring out the ratio so of the chemicals the, that you put the, in the bin. <laughs> if the clothes are not folded, so what? do you expect me to fold them? No, doesn't matter. They can sit unfolded in a basket. Nobody's hurt by that. <laughs> But do we fold? Sometimes. Yeah, we fold. Yeah, when we can. Yeah. That's how it like works. It. Yeah. That's something that I found um, very um, ununderstood. Like, okay, everyone do how they want in their family, right? Of course. Everyone do yeah. however they want. and um, If everybody in the household is happy and non-coerced, it is not for me to judge how somebody yeah. lives their life. Yeah. But what I found is that uh, life is so complicated and um, we, uh, we literally live under uh, pressure, like under stress in this capitalistic world, right? And I believe that um, home in the family uh, is where people are supposed to relax. Yep. It shouldn't be a stressful uh, place where... Um, you're gonna be feeling pressured to uh, do things 
um because at the end of the day like um if um you know we didn't cook and we didn't you know uh, they say we didn't even order and we just eat a yeah. sandwich or yeah. you know something that is very quick and i can decide we don't not go to hungry. eat we, yeah we're not gonna die hungry but it's good to uh know that um you know for me it's good to go to sleep knowing that it's not like i had you as my responsibility yeah. that it was my job that i failed to do and it's something that i had to work on many times and uh i think even until I'm a until up. now sometimes <laughs> you you need to remind me that and yeah. say do you know that i'm not your responsibility yeah i'm a grown up i'm supposed to be in charge of me taking care of my own needs like it is not up to you but it's something that i have to unlearn because yeah, um, sure. that's not something I, i grow up seeing it's something i believe that's that's fair right why a grown up person like would have to be to have me as a person who's responsible of them as if like it's something right magical or uh, an extra energy that i'm getting like it's already hard like even to take care of kids yep. right yep so um but kids you know they're kids they need somebody to take care of you need to do that right yeah. you put them on earth but why would an adult be my responsibility <laughs> like no but I, i i hear what you're saying about it being something that you have to learn unlearn because in the same way i have to i have to remind myself that it is not just re my responsibility to fund everything in the household mm -hmm. right like it is we are both income earners and that means that like your money is for the household and my money is for the household it's mm -hmm. not like i have to pay for everything mm -hmm. and you get to keep all your money and just <laughs> spend it on whatever you want right but we both have a balance to this because of mm -hmm. but that's something that i have to i have to remind myself of often you helped me with that mm -hmm. and like it's the same thing it's um do you find it because easy to unlearn no no i found that learning is like a easy learning is easy but to <laughs> unlearn is yeah. harder like uh unlearning like a uh, because i had to unlearn like a uh, stuff because i was i wasn't born here right uh, i lived elsewhere before coming in canada and um i found it hard to unlearn and then you know put some new stuff and make it go smoothly as if i made it my yeah. own like a, um on learning about responsibilities that i may have because i'm um you know um yeah like i'm the woman i'm in the partnership right yeah i i, I don't think it's necessary. like the thing is it not it's it's not your job or it's not my job to do these things that have mm -hmm. been previously gendered right mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean that we don't care about what happens. Like to say that to when you say it's not your job to take care of me, or I say it's not your job to take care of me, that doesn't mean you don't care what happens to me. That means that if it's too much for you, you do not have to worry about my well-being. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, And I can take care of myself. Yes, and if it's too much for me, then it's not on me to. Worry about every single financial thing that goes on in the house. Yes, because we do <laughs> care about uh, care. each other. I, I I believe, but um, when we can't, when you are not in a position to do that, when it's feeling hard, because sometimes it's hard. Yeah. Um, you accept that you can take that, you know, out of the list. You can sacrifice that. You know, sometimes it happens that I'm not cooking for you. Yeah. Most of the time, uh, I would say that eighty percent is me who cook. Yeah, probably. Uh, when we're cooking, but sometimes I'm not cooking. Yeah, because right? I'm not feeling good. Because I'm not. And um, that's what hundred percent fine. Because <laughs> I'm doing something else, and uh, and 
I'm not going to say no since this is my job to cook and I'm the one doing it 80%. So I have to do whatever because otherwise you're going to die. <laughs> right. Well, I'm not going to die. So that's the thing. Or otherwise you're going to love me less. <clears throat> and that's absurd. Do you love me because of what I'm doing? No. Do you love me because of how I'm making you comfortable <laughs> no. at home? No, that's nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> if you're like, this is okay. So, I mean, obviously every, every relationship has its own dynamics, but in my perspective, I love you for who you are. And I feel like that if I love you for who you are, then I have to accept that sometimes you're not going to be the quote unquote perfect housewife, right? Which I'm never. So what? I'm not, like, we're not meant for perfection. Yeah, like, um, it's nonsense. We are not meant for being perfect. I don't, I think that we are all just a human being with uh, lots of flaws. And also we live in a crazy world, right? Yes. Yeah. Backwards, upside down, inside it's... out, absurd, nonsense world. So <laughs> we need peace in our house like we need you need peace when you are home and yeah. um that peace cannot come out of oppression no you can't yeah no you don't get peace by forcing someone to be a certain way that isn't good for them that doesn't no. match who they are like or, that's... uh con controlling like um not i no. i don't think it's good or healthy to have Someone controlling you nope. in your house. I agree. Someone who's like a, acting as your superior. You know how I feel. You have your boss, <laughs> you, you know, at work. <laughs> yeah. And then when you get home, you have a boss. Yeah, no, thank you. I don't understand why people find peace in that situation. I'm not finding peace in that situation. I'm not finding peace in um, a situation where you would be my chief. No. You would be the head. What does that even mean? Because I, I never get the sense of it. Um, that analogy of the, 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 the head, the heart, like I never saw any head walking by itself, right? Mm. No. Uh, a person who lost all the ability of his body and who only have... Um, his brain and like everything on top is working but nothing is working like that person is um like uh in lack of is that person cannot be working fully right yeah the head by itself okay even the brain even you know being able to talk because that's what it is right on the head yeah you're gonna if the man is the head of the family, that means that he's the brain, he's the mouth that's going to be talking, you know. Mm. He has most of the senses, you know. He's the one who's going to be seeing. He's the one who's going to be breathing, smelling, who's going to be testing. Yeah. He can, like, he's the head. Yeah. And it's, it's I'm like, actually, it's oppressive. Like, yeah. it's really oppressive to imagine that I would go home and have that. No, well, no. It's funny because there's, there is men and I know like they're like usually extremely religious. Uh, they have a very strict biblical version of the world that they mm -hmm. believe in. And they do, they exclusively want to have their wives be blind to the outside world. They want their wives to not know anything and I, yeah. I can't, like... That's what it is, being the head. Like, yeah. Because it's not just the part. Like, <coughs> it's everything that comes with the head. It's I just, men deciding because of the Bible, because of whatever, things to decide yeah. that they're going to be the head. Then if I have someone who's going to be the head, what am I? The heart? I don't know. What is the heart? Because I, 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 I all the time try to understand, like, because what comes with the heart, okay, we, go, we see that uh, 
think pumping blood, okay? Yeah. Necessary, but also when we talk about the heart, we're talking about um, sometimes emotions, even yeah. though emotions come from the brain, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, yeah compa- we, co- compassion. Yeah. Yeah. The heart is more love and compassion, right? Well, we talk about the heart is where love and compassion comes from. But like you said, like that's a brain thing too. That's a brain thing. Like so, uh, being, even in that, you know, image that they give about the head and the heart like i'm like okay i'm the i'm the heart so my job is to be pumping my job is to work <laughs> yeah right yeah to work and distribute mm. things yeah. right pump like i'm a machine that's gonna be giving blood to all the parts that are gonna be just controlled by the head right Oh my god! I just think it's. I a ter- found that I think it's, it's a terrible analogy, too, no. actually. <laughs> I find I'm it to be nonsense. There is, there is. I, I cannot build anything like a, a relationship with a person who would consider me as, or consider themselves as, the head, of me. I find that is really disgusting. Yeah, that's fair. I th- I think that it's. I, I mean, like you say, like. You go out in your life and you have to deal with your boss telling you what to do anyway. Yeah. And I do not deal well with that. Mm-hmm. Me so, so I don't know how other people do. I don't, I'm, I'm not a good order taker. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so I can't imagine like going home and giving someone orders if I don't want to take orders at work. And if I don't want to take orders at home. So why would I be giving orders? Like I don't. Like all it takes just, is just because we are in love, just because we are building a family. Like even as you say, um, I don't consider myself as the head of my kids. Mm-hmm. They are not under my orders. Like uh, I, uh, I hope that they can be human by themselves. I hope that I can have. Um, this is uh, that, you know. Being open mind to listen to them yeah. and uh, help them grow and become whoever they want, not what I want. Yeah. As for myself, so. Yeah, it's yeah. it's like so when kids are little, like there's like somehow we're supposed to be domineering towards them. We're supposed to rule over them and with an iron fist and say. This is bedtime. This is how they're, you're supposed to behave. This is what you're supposed to do. Better get doing this. Better get doing that. Mm-hmm. And then we expect after years and years and years and years of doing that while they're developing, they're suddenly supposed to start thinking on their own later. And we're supposed they're supposed to like have the tools after years of being domineered to like come up with what they want to do. And at this time, they need to come up with what they want to do by like 13, 14 years old so that they can go into that field at school. <laughs> like, even even when they're kids, uh, like it's just love, like, I think that you are not ruling on that. You, you, are, are, you, um, that's, you that's, may be ruling on the program. Yeah. Uh, but even there, um, I think that you're going to be like uh, the agenda and you are not there to rule on them. You can tell them that this, we can afford it, or this, we cannot afford it, or this is secure to do it this yeah. way. This is uh, safe, to, this is unsafe. To guide them, yeah. not to, um, yeah. they are not there to execute. Yeah. I found that yeah. uh, that would be kind of like a, a counterproductive and uh, also oppressive yeah. like no but culturally that's what people <coughs> how people claim you're supposed to parent right mm-hmm. but it it's it is counterproductive it actually makes them resent you more as time goes on and it and it doesn't give them the tools to function properly later on in life mm-hmm. and make decisions on individual li- level later it's it's because domination <laughs> doesn't work <laughs> Actually, it doesn't. It doesn't work in an, uh, any. I don't know. Maybe at the at the fabric of something like it in the industry, and even there, I think that machines are better to be dominated. I. I mean, I find. Uh, I. You know how I feel about these things. Like I. I find that domination is going to make everything worse, and it even harms the people doing the dominating. Right. 
Yeah, I believe that only machines should be dominated. <laughs> Not human being, like a... Yeah, well, unless that's your kink, and then you do that in the privacy of your own home. <laughs> yeah, but even in your home, like, uh, there is so much ignorance, I think. I think. Don't you think that it's a matter of ignorance because people don't know? Yeah. I, I tend to believe that it's just because people don't know. Because if they knew, they would do better. I right? Yeah, see, I think... I've, I've, I, it's hard for me to understand uh, people who don't analyze things, like it, who just go along with the cultural norms and just be part of the normal co- cultural fabric or whatever, mm-hmm. right? Like I, it's hard for, because I've always been a person, even when I was a conservative, who tried to analyze things and think of things in a certain way so that I had justifications for the reason, like for the r- way that I was behaving and the way that I was doing things. So it's really hard for me to understand, like just accepting cultural norms and just being like, yep, I'm good with this. But it's because the world is so complicated. Maybe people don't have time or don't take that time um, because um, there are so many aspects. Like yeah, you need fair. to take, uh, like and I understand for men, especially um, because men are not all the time aware of uh, the kind of oppression that can be there uh, on uh, women for sure uh, i see it with um the men i grew up with uh they we don't have the same memory of the the, the things yeah. right of uh, yeah. what happened because they were not aware because they were not targeted uh, yeah i can't really remember what it's called but there is a blind spot right mm-hmm. when you're a, a member of a privileged class there's a blind spot whenever oppression is, or like subtle oppression is happening. You, yeah, it's not happening to you. No, it's so invisible. Like? You won't see it. You won't easily feel the compassion. Yeah. Uh, well, because it those, didn't, it didn't happen. You what don't, are you talking about? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the word is already so complicated and, and stressful. And um, that's why I believe that may, maybe people don't take time to um to analyze um, I just, stuff and and really decide because yeah. otherwise how, explain to me how they they will decide that just to gender leadership in well i mean a family yeah yeah it's got to be because like you say like there's enough factors within somebody's life that they can't take or they don't have the energy to take the time or maybe they don't have the tools, like nobody taught them how to analyze things or think critically about certain things, right? Like <clears throat> critical thinking doesn't just come naturally. We're our brains are connection making machines. We just make those connections. We just go with the flow and like yeah. We're emoting machines that sometimes think logically. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes. Okay, it's been uh, 52 minutes so far, I think. Yeah, well, you can take a minute off of that. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, um, yeah, uh, how, uh, how do you feel about our coming back? No, yeah, I'm, I'm happy. I'm excited. What would you like that the people who listen to us retain about what we've been talking about? So today we kind of talked about, like... Uh, how it how a relationship can function without being hierarchical or gendered like without roles being gendered because obviously we still have genders Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm -hmm. (laughs) but um, but we are like i'm not non-binary i'm not an agender person i'm a man (laughs) you're a man i'm a woman (laughs) so you're not my head no i'm not your head you're my partner i am that's the that's the goal, yeah. And I love you so much. I love you so much. And thank you very much for uh, anyone who listened or uh, watched today. Yeah, and I guess so was... uh, the other thing I guess would be to say, like, do we want people to find us online in various places? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, okay. I tweet mostly in Kirundi, my mother tongue, and in French and in English, and sometimes I'm mix everything um right now my handle is ikigata nyakazi maybe you're gonna put it somewhere yeah we'll put and a link in, uh, in the notes i sometimes change my name so um you better 
put the link so that they can find me because sometimes I change my name depending on my mood. Uh, but on Instagram, I'm Pamela Kazekari. And right now you don't really have any other projects going on, hey? I have many projects, but I don't <laughs> want to talk about them <laughs> okay, right okay. now. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yes, but soon. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, and I would love that we'll be uh, discussing more and more. Yeah. Um, and share. So if people like what we're doing, you can leave a thumbs up. Um, you can subscribe. You can share. You can talk about it. You can put in the comments and say what you thought about um, uh, what we were talking about or uh, any topic you would like us to be um, talking. Yeah, for sure. Topic ideas. Because, of course, one of the roadblocks when you're creating something like this is ideas about what to talk about so <laughs> yes exactly and you can go follow Corey. yeah i'm uh, <laughs> at skeptical lefty on all the places and he talks about oh, i got yeah i i have my podcast and uh, youtube show we talk about uh, uh leftist books and leftist theory and uh, i talk i do interviews and i talk to a variety of people to spread critical thinking left-wing philosophy and progressive politics yes so see you next time and um, come back again on this channel and uh, hopefully we're not gonna disappear again <laughs> yeah, we're here right. to stay <laughs> yeah,